Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. It's Monday the 14th of October 2024 and today is known as I Love You Day. Yes. So it is important that you start to express yourself, tell people how much you love them and how much they mean to you. Today is also World Standards Day and this is just to raise awareness for the standardization of products across the world. Well, on today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which is the Ondo poll. Build Citizen Trust, EU IPC tells INEC. Another is Varsity Entry Age will make provisions for exceptional students, and that is according to the minister. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, this is Monday. Let's set the tone with our quote. Well, this says your attitude, not your aptitude, determines your altitude. And that is according to Zig Ziglar. He was an American author and he says this morning, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. In fact, there is a book that says attitude is everything. So, of course, your attitude would determine your aptitude. Well, your attitude would determine your altitude, not your aptitude. So, it's not everything. It's not everything that you've learned in school. It's not all that you know going by the books, but how you react to certain things, how you, you know, let people know who you are, your personality. That is it. Your attitude definitely would determine your altitude. It would determine how high you can go. In fact, I'm sure there are people that you've met and they're so great at their jobs they are amazing when it comes to the job but then sometimes they have a nasty attitude and you're just like you know what i can't work with this person this person doesn't know how to communicate properly this person doesn't know how to speak you know well to to me and how i want to be treated and even though you're so great at this job i just cannot work with this person and guess what you've missed an opportunity so that's why it is what determines your altitude so how far you want to go in life well it starts with your attitude so putting up the right attitude definitely will let you go that far and make sure that you have a better life and human capital is super important in fact it is imperative i cannot overemphasize that because the people that you have in your circle are the ones who make you or break you so if you're going to have the right attitude with the right people then the sky's the limit so this morning make sure that you're having the right attitude if there's something that you need to change now is the time change is something that is constant so it now is the time to change your attitude have a positive outlook on life treat people with kindness make sure you let them know how much you love care about them and how much you're good at what you do as well so of course your aptitude is also important but your attitude just takes the icing of the cake all right that's it for our top trending stories we'll go on um, or rather that's it for our quote of the day we'll go on to our top trending stories this morning and it says we have misused resources god has given up to us and that is according to obasanjo the former president olushegu obasanjo emphasized that nigeria is blessed with abundant natural resources but has mismanaged them urging leaders to better utilize the assets for national development. Speaking at the Methodist um, Church of Abuja's 40th anniversary, Obasanjo and the leaders, um, including President Tinubu, called for unity, collaboration, and faith in addressing Nigeria's challenges and promoting prosperity. Well, religious leaders, including Methodist prelate Dr. Oliver Abba, encouraged Nigerians to persevere, work together, and pray for the nation's healing, highlighting Nigeria's global significance and potential for greatness. I've always said this time and time again, and Nigeria is so blessed. We're not just blessed with natural resources, we're blessed with the 
right kind of people, people who are so resilient, people who are so industrious, people who are just so amazing, but we're not harnessing that. And, you know, we're misusing the talents that we have, we're misusing the natural resources that we have. When we talk about natural resources, I'm sure everyone's mind just go to, you know, crude. But crude is not our only natural resources. You know, we still have agriculture. We have fertile lands. Our lands are so good. We plant maize. We plant rice, yam, cassava. The list goes. It's endless. We have so many things in the up north that we can plant. You know, even when it comes to the south, we are looking at Cross River and all of that. Fertile lands. But we're not really harnessing that. And it seems like because, you know, the oil boom came, everyone forgot about how agriculture definitely helped us. That was That's why you hear of the cocoa plantation. Those were the things that grew our economy earlier on. But now we're not really looking into agriculture anymore. We're not even looking into mechanized farming. How many, how many people really want to say, I want to be a farmer right now? Not so much. And that's something we need to start looking at. We're talking about natural resources. Well, tourism is also, because, you know, one major thing that we can use to get revenue, because we have beautiful places. Have you been to Plateau? Have you been to Joss? It's so beautiful. I mean, there was the Obudukato Ranch at some point, you know, there are so many places that you can visit in nigeria there's the yankari game reserve but most of these places right now are dilapidating because there is not we don't have proper management you know we can say oh we want to you know ride with this project in fact um the minister of the fct yen some week has said he wants to build a water park that would be the largest in africa even though a lot of people are like why is this your pet project at the moment but guess what even if he does that in the next few years you might not see it again it would just be a shadow of itself how are we harnessing our beautiful landscape in nigeria tourism is such a great way for us to get you know revenue if we're saying that our economy isn't thriving so well flourishing as we want it to be then there are so many things that we need to look we need to turn every stone and see how best can we help our nation and you know there these are just a few things that i have uh, highlighted here but there are so many things that we can do and we're not really harnessing um all the potentials that we have i know the former president now has said it but it's one thing to say it is another to start to do the work you start you have to start to execute all of the things that you're saying and you know it's beautiful to say oh we need peace and unity and all of that yes we do but what else are you helping the people with you cannot just come and you're always saying we want peace and unity we're not harnessing or we're not we're misusing or mismanaging you know what god has blessed us with okay we've heard you what is the way forward how do we move from here those are the questions pertinent questions that we need to be asking right now i'm glad you know that they've been able to bring that up say it and then we can just find a way to ensure that we're now managing what god has really given us yeah all right another top trending story says reverse latest fuel price hike pending court a verdict and that is what Serap is telling the president Serap has urged president Tunubu to reverse the latest petrol price hike pending the court's decision on a lawsuit challenging NPCL's authority to increase prices Petrol prices rose to 998 Naira in Lagos and 1,030 Naira in Abuja, marking the second increase within a month, following an earlier job um, from 855 to 897, respectively. Serap argues that the price hike undermines the ongoing court case, impacts public trust in the judicial process, and violates the rule of law. Sarap's lawsuit also calls for an investigation into NNPCL over alleged mismanagement and failure to remit all revenues, which amounts to billions of dollars and a naira. Hmm, fuel price hike. I think we really, really spoke about this last week. And um, for, for a country that really has so much uh, natural resources, we have oil, um, we still have to pay this huge amount. It's quite sad and it's quite unfortunate, but I mean, with what Sarah is saying is we have a court order. Why are you still increasing the prices? In fact, I know this is like the second price um, hike in two months, but how about we talk about is the third one, um, second price hike in one month, but is the third one in two months? So what is the trajectory of this? Does it mean that we're always going to be, you know, looking for more money to buy fuel every other month? 
and it's so expensive. Now, I know that the official rate with NNPC is 998 Naira, but guess what? I live in Lagos as well, and I'm buying for 1,050 Naira because other few stations are definitely going to sell higher than NNPC or, or because they definitely have to make profit. So... The, the, the right amount at this point is not even 998 naira. It is about 1,050 naira here in Lagos. And I can only imagine how much it is in Abuja. Someone was telling me the other day that in Wari, they had to pay, I think, about 1,200 to 1,300 naira per liter. So how much is my salary that I have to spend so much, you know, on transportation or to get fuel? How much am I making? Have, have I seen an increase in my salary in the past few months as much? Not necessarily. Even my employer, it would even... I can't even go to meet my employer. And this is just me. I'm just saying hypothetically. I can't even go to meet my employer to say, I need you, know, you to increase my salary because of you know, fuel has gone up. Because they are also facing it as well. Everyone is facing this. It's quite unfortunate that this is what we have to live with every single day. And guess what? It's not just fuel. Fuel is just one thing, but it has a ripple effect into almost every other thing. Prices of goods and services have gone up. They're really expensive. Inflation is at an all-time high. And it feels like every time I come here and I say inflation is at an all-time high, but guess what? It's even going to go higher again. Why? What are you doing for your nation? What are you doing for your people? These are people who voted you in. Nobody expected this. I'm sure the day the president assumed office, if anyone would have just given us, um, you know, just a sneak peek into what's going to happen a year later, no one would have envisaged that this is where we're going to be. Buying petrol for over a thousand naira, something that was just 186 naira last year. How many percent are we talking about? How many hundreds of percentage are we talking about? And people can barely feed. This is where we are now. And I love the fact that, you know, Seraph is coming out and you know, trying their best to always be um, at the top of the game when it comes to things like this. But I don't think this job is only for Seraph or even the CSOs. I think everyone needs to speak up right now. Everyone needs to speak up. We need to start to demand that we want better welfare packages in Nigeria. This definitely, it affects your welfare. Because if you do not have money to go to work, then if you cannot pay for your transportation fees, then what's going to happen? You're not going to work. You're not going to eat. And even when you go to work, the money that you get is not enough. It's not enough for you to pay your rent. It's not enough for you to pay your bills. It's not enough for you to send your kids to school. It's not enough for you to put food on your table. It's not enough for you to even save. It's not for you, enough for you to even go on vacation. You cannot do anything. It's almost like you are just trying to... In fact, you're not making ends meet anymore. At this point, it's not ends meet. Because if I have to cut down how I live, my lifestyle, every single day, I have to shrink myself just because Nigeria is happening to me and to everyone around me, then that's not nice. Instead, we should be looking for better ways to make our economy grow better and also ensure that Nigerians are living well, meaningful lives. We're all flourishing together. And I always ask, what is the plan? What is the Nigerian dream? Where are we going to? Where do we see ourselves in the next 50, 100 years? Other countries, I'm sure they have such plans. We do not, at least not that I know of. But yet, we're still talking about the basic necessities that are supposed to be basic. Why are we still talking about fuel? Why are we talking about roads? Why are we talking about transportation? Why are we talking about healthcare? These are things that the government should have already put in place for us, put systems in place. And I know it feels like I'm ranting about this because it just hurts me it pains me it's pulling my heartstrings in ways that you cannot imagine but i'm sure that's how most nigerians feel out there and we need to start to let them know that we want better we deserve better nigerians are the most amazing people on earth we're so happy we're so resilient we're so hardworking. we're so industrious we have so much to offer so many potentials but yet this is what we're reduced to talking about fuel that we're buying for over a thousand naira. Quite sad and unfortunate, but I hope things will get better. We all hope things will get better.
All right, final top trending story says stamp duty dispute, court orders CBN to pay firm. 579.1 billion naira in damages. The Federal High Court in Abuja has ordered the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to pay Kasmal International Services 579 naira, well, 579.1 billion naira for assisting NIPOS in collecting stamp duties between January 1, 2015 and January 31, 2020. The court also ordered, directed, um, also directed the CBN to pay the judgment sum with an additional 10% interest per year, rejecting arguments from the CBN and Attorney General of the Federation that NIPOS lacks the power to collect stamp duties. The ruling upheld a previous judgment in favor of Kasmal, stating that the CBN and AGF failed to effectively dispute the case. Kasmal, which has already received 10.3 billion naira from CBN, sought payment of 15% of the stamp duties collected during the period as by its agreement with a NIPOS. And this is where we're going to end our top trending stories right now. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll look at all the stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us.